friends welcome to the 20th lecture in module 2 where we are going to discuss about details of analysis of tension leg platforms briefly known as TLPs. Tension leg platforms are form dominated offshore structures meant for deep water oil exploration. If you look at the problem formulation for analyzing a TLP essentially TLP consists of a deck consists of a deck which will have all topside details as drilling derrick living quarters flat boom etc which will be supported by the column members and pontoon members these are column members this is a pontoon member which rests on the seabed and anchored by tethers so these are called tethers the basic design concept of a tension lock platform is the buoyancy force exceeds the weight. We know buoyancy, we know buoyancy is proportional to the submerged volume. So, if this is my water level, which may mean sea level, the buoyancy force will act in the upward direction and weight of the platform will act in the downward direction. If buoyancy exceeds the weight, it will make the system to float. Okay. When the system floats, it is easy to install, to commission, but since the buoyancy is larger than the weight, to hold the platform in position tethers are provided these tethers will be of high initial pretension so these tethers will have high initial pretension. We call this value as. Now, the basic equation of equilibrium will be W is acting downward, which is lower than F B. So, W and F B need to be balanced. So, I should say W plus T 0 should be F B. So, the difference between the weight and the buoyancy is will be by T 0. Okay. So, now to analyze the system we need to know the degrees of freedom of the system, we need to also know the mass these degrees of freedom, we also need to know the stiffness matrix of the system to do the primary or preliminary dynamic analysis. Let us talk about degrees of freedom, we already spoke about that just to de reiterate what is important let us mark the three axes. Let us say these are the three axes x, y and z. Let us say we have displacement along x as such displacement along y axis as sway, displacement along z axis as heave. Use your right hand now, keep your thumb facing the x axis in the positive sense. The remaining four fingers 
will show you the direction of rotation for example if we keep my thumb along the positive axis of x this now becomes my roll direction this becomes the pitch direction and this becomes my yaw direction so there are 6 degrees of freedom the platform has 3 translations and 3 rotations this is along x y and z this is about x y and z ok. So, since there are 6 degrees of freedom I need to establish the proportionate mass values along these 6 degrees of freedom. So, my mass matrix is expected to be size of 6 by 6. Similarly, I should derive the stiffness coefficients and then the stiffness matrix which will also be a size of 6 by 6. Once I have the mass matrix and stiffness matrix for a given system of TLP can always find the damping matrix using the classical damping method. or I can use Rayleigh's approach which is mass and stiffness proportional. You can also use Kahe method to get my C matrix provided I know the damping value. Okay, in terms of percentage usually it is 2 to 5 percent of that of the critical. So, friends for a given problem how do we actually determine or derive the mass matrix and stiffness matrix from first principles which should be based on some computer method. So, that I can write a simple analytical coding to create this mass and stiffness matrices and then do the analysis for this particular structure. So, let us talk about derivation of stiffness matrix from the first principles. In the first module we have learnt how to derive stiffness matrix for various kinds of boundary conditions and the problems. We now apply that algorithm back again to a TLP. Let us say I have a tension leg platform of a specific dimension which has got a column member and a pontoon member whose CG center of gravity or the mass center is lying somewhere here. Okay, this means center of gravity. So, as I know this will be subjected to or commissioned to the seabed using tethers which has initial pretension that value is T 0. Okay. Now, the length of the tether is marked as L. The distance of the C G from the keel is marked as h bar. This is my mean sea level. The depth of immersion is marked as d r. When I apply a force or a lateral load in terms of wave load to the system, the system will now respond because it is complaint in nature, it will start moving towards its right. Let us say hypothetically 
it has moved to this much. The restoration will again happen by the cables or by the tendons. The tension in the cable will be T 0 plus delta T 1. There is an increase in tension because of the displacement. We believe and assume that the tension in this cable is also of the same amount which is T 0 plus delta T 1. So, what we have done is we have given a displacement of x 1 to the system. Okay. Now, the T thirds undergo an angle of rotation which is gamma x. Now, what is K i j? K i j is a force in the ith degree of freedom for unit displacement in jth degree of freedom keeping all other degrees of freedom constrained that is how we can derive the stiffness coefficient k i j. Okay. It is actually the force. We want to find the force in all degrees of freedom by giving unit displacement in the jth degree of freedom. So, I have given unit displacement in the first degree of freedom because surge you see you look at this equation surge is the first degree, sway is the second degree, heave is the third degree, roll is the fourth degree, pitch is the fifth degree and yaw is the sixth degree. So, I have given unit displacement along x. I should say this displacement should be unity. I want to find the forces. What will be the forces generated in different components of degrees of freedom? So, obviously, you will have a force which is the stiffness coefficient in the first degree because of displacement given in the first degree you will also get the stiffness coefficient in the third degree because of unit displacement given in the first degree because you know there will be a set down effect. Okay. This is called set down in TLP dynamics and of course, this is called offset. And further, it will also give me rise to moment k phi 1. In addition, weight will be acting downwards, buoyancy will be acting upwards. We already know that weight which is acting downward is much lower than buoyancy which acts upward. So, weight acting downward will be compromised with T 0 which is also acting downward to equalize this to the buoyancy force which acts upward which we already said. Okay, we already said that. So, just as a thumb rule for our understanding, we must know that usually T 0 is about 12 to 15 percent of the draft. You know, you design the draft value, you know the immersed volume, from the immersed volume you know the load or you know the weight. Take about 15 percent of that 
that is going to be a t 0. It means w and f b are separated or let us say differenced by a value of about 15 percent of that of the immersed volume okay, that is an approximate thumb rule idea. It may vary from different TLPs, but to know an idea we should have a guess. Okay. Now, having said this particular figure, we now are interested in estimating the values of in fact deriving the coefficients of k 1 1, k 5 1 and k 3 1. So, looking at this figure I can now write the increase in tension 